Microsoft Loop is here. Are you ready to take your productivity to the next level? With its new features and capabilities, Loop is set to change the way we work in Microsoft 365. In this video, I'll take a closer look at what Loop has to offer and how it compares to Notion. So what exactly is Microsoft Loop? Now, if you're familiar with the productivity app Notion, then you've pretty much got a good idea already of what Microsoft Loop is. It's really not a carbon copy of Notion, but very much inspired by the way Notion works. Now, there are two aspects to Loop in Microsoft 365. There are Loop components and the Loop app. Now, the components themselves have been around for a couple of years, and you can think of them like portable pieces of content that don't depend on a particular application. So, for instance, if you want to create a table, you might traditionally open Excel, create the table there, and then copy and paste that into another app, maybe Word, for instance. Now, with a Loop component, you don't need to do that. So for instance, if you're in Teams or Outlook and you decide that you need to create a table, you can create a loop component, select table, and then you've got that table in your email or in your Teams chat without ever having to switch application. And that's what Microsoft is really trying to do here is to blur the lines between applications and to prevent you from having to constantly decide which application you need to use and then switch between them. Now that may not seem very interesting by itself, but these components, they're portable, so you can add them to any other piece of content as well. They stay synchronized regardless of where they're located or where you link them. And you can also work on them together with a wider team, so they support co-authoring. Now what Microsoft announced this week was the public preview of the Microsoft Loop app. Now this brings everything together, if you like. So Really what the app is designed to do is provide a workspace where you can place all of your loop components and then collaborate on them with your team members. So it's like a canvas where you can do all of your generating ideas, commenting, working with colleagues. It's kind of like OneNote, but in a little bit more of a structured way. So where can you use loop and the loop components? Well, of course, you can use the components in the new loop app, which was announced this week. They they also work in Teams chat, they'll be coming to channels soon, Whiteboard, Outlook and Word for the web. So what I really want to focus on in this video is the app itself because that's what's new this week. So let's head over to the desktop and I'll show you what it looks like. So this is what you get when you open Loop for the first time. Now there are two workspaces here. I've got one called Petri Site Design which is something that I'm just playing around with and by default you get the Getting Started workspace. So if I click on getting started here, and you can see straight away, if you're familiar with Notion, this looks very, very similar. So getting started is the workspace, and there are different pages here that I can click through and sub pages that I can access. Now, almost identical to Notion, Loop works on the concept of blocks. So with each block, you can insert a piece of content. So it might be a piece of text, an image, a table, a bullet list, for instance. So you can either just start typing if you want to insert text, or if you want to insert something specific, let's say a bullet list, you just click the slash icon and then you select the kind of component or content, if you like, that you want to add there. So I'm going to select bullet list so I can add item one, item two, item three, and you get the idea. If I want to start a new block, then I just click enter and then enter again. And I can choose a different kind of content. Maybe, maybe I want to upload an image, for instance. You can just copy and paste an image onto a page, but maybe you have a file that you want to upload. So here you can see a checklist. If I want to comment on a block, all I have to do is click in it somewhere and then I can add a reaction, a like for instance, or I can add a comment. I think we need to expedite. for instance. Now some of the other things that are very similar to Notion is you have this concept of headers. So you can essentially add an image at the top here just to really help you identify the page and separate it from all of the others. And you can add an icon here as well. Now at the minute, these headers, it's limited to just these images that are built into Loop. You can't add your own. But I think that's something that Microsoft, of course, will add in the future. Another thing that 
Loop shares with Notion, and it's a very important feature in Notion, is the ability to create pages based on templates. So if I come to the Getting Started workspace here, I can choose to add a new page. And you can see at the bottom here, there are a variety of templates that I can choose from or I can click explore other templates. And there's a whole load of ideas here that I can choose from in terms of the way that I want my page to be structured and set up. Now, there are a couple of other things that Microsoft announced and that was Jumpstart and Microsoft Copilot. Now, if you're not familiar with Copilot, this is basically Microsoft's artificial intelligence technology that's based on ChatGPT that they're building into Bing and across the Office suite of applications and, of course, Microsoft 365. And Microsoft Loop is going to be no exception. All of that good stuff is coming to Loop. Now, at the moment, Copilot is in private preview for Microsoft 365, so you can't enable it in Loop. But I expect over the next few months, Microsoft will probably make the preview public. Jumpstart is also another cool feature that allows you to set up a new Loop workspace and have it automatically search across your Microsoft 365 tenant for content that might be relevant to add. So it works by looking at the name of the workspace, and you can also add several keywords to help it refine the search for you. Now, Jumpstart is available as an experimental feature in Loop at the moment. So if you click these three ellipses up at the top of the application and then settings and come down to experiments, you can see that Copilot is grayed out, but I've clicked on Jumpstart workspace here. So if I go back and create a new workspace, so I have to click here, new workspace, and then I type, I don't know, podcasts. I'm not going to invite anybody at the moment, but then I'm going to say IT Pro, IT Ops Pro Show, and it will basically offer content that's already in my Microsoft 36 tenant that I might want to add. So here there's already a loop component connected to the podcast. So I just have to check it. And then of course I can check, you know, more than one piece of content if I want, and then just click create. So what if you want to choose between Notion or Loop? Which one is right for you? So I'm just going to do a quick comparison between the two applications. Now, I think one of the killer features in Notion is databases. Now, a database in Notion looks something like a table, but it's actually more powerful than that. And it's something similar to a Microsoft list. Now, Loop at this stage doesn't have a database feature. But Microsoft, of course, does have lists as an app, but it's just not integrated into Loop. Now, I don't know whether there are any plans on the roadmap to actually integrate lists into Loop. I think that Microsoft should do that because it is a big feature in Notion that is currently missing for Loop, but it does make the whole thing rather more complicated. One of the big advantages of Loop is that it natively integrates with the whole Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So you don't have to use connectors or third party pieces of software. Everything is there. All the data, all the information that you want to search and add is already at your fingertips. And you can just add it to Loop and, of course, share it with people who are in your organization. Whereas Notion is limited to whatever's inside Notion. But if you want to extend it, then you've got to use some kind of third party solution. Now, one of the biggest draws for Notion is the community-driven templates. So one of the problems, I think, with Notion is that it's how do you set it up? You know, how do you create a page that's actually going to work for you? And while it's not that difficult, it does actually take time and you've got to think about it. So what people often do is they just go out and grab a template that suits their needs and then use that to create a page. Now, while Loop does have templates, you're limited to what Microsoft is offering at this stage. And I think in order to compete with Notion, Microsoft is going to have to open up the template ecosystem, if you'd like, so that you can have a gallery hosted somewhere where you can contribute and load templates that have been contributed by third parties. So is Loop the right tool for you? Well, of course, that's difficult to answer without understanding your exact needs and where you are right now. If you're already fully invested into Microsoft 365 and you're not already using something like Notion, then of course, Loop is worth a look, bearing in mind that it's still in preview. So there may be some bugs and some issues and you don't have all of the functionality there right at this moment. 
It's not a mature product, so there are some things there, like I previously said, that you can do in Notion, like third-party templates and databases that don't exist in Loop. But from what I've seen of it so far, you know, one of the things I do like about it is that it looks great and it's easy to use. When I think of applications like Notion and Slack, I think these are really applications that are designed by geeks for geeks. And they're not always easy to pick up or intuitive for end users. And of course, you've got all that integration across the Microsoft 365 ecosystem, the ability to search across it, all the e-discovery and compliance and permission pieces that are built into Microsoft 365 also work with Loop. If you're working with Microsoft Teams and there is some integration with that application, of course, especially in chat, Microsoft says that it's bringing loop components to Teams channels at some point in the future. One thing that doesn't exist in Teams at the moment is any real integration with the app. So if you want to add, you know, as a tab in a Teams channel, a loop page or a loop workspace, you can't do that at the moment. And that's a little bit frustrating when we spend so much of our time in Teams, it would It'd be nice to have a quick way to jump across to a loop page or workspace. So what about the future of Microsoft Loop? Well, I think this is a great start. You know, we've been waiting a long time for this app. Microsoft has been talking about the app now for a couple of years. So it's great to be able to finally get our hands on it. You will need to enable it in your Microsoft 365 tenant. So it's not turned on by default at this stage because it's still in preview. So you'll need to go and do that if you want to give users access to it. So let me know what you think about Loop. Have you used it? Do you use Notion? Would you move to Loop if you're already using Microsoft 365? But it really is an exciting time, especially with all these new announcements from Microsoft in the last few weeks, what with Copilot and now Loop. There's lots to look at and to look forward to. If you found this video useful, then please do give it a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see more like this from Petri. I'm going to leave you with another video that you might find interesting. Interesting, but that's it from me for this week, and I'll see you next time.